I don't know oh, if I want to deal with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope everybody's okay. Compared to. Well, uh, I've been invited here today to tell you about my youth. It seems my uh, reputation always precedes me. <laughs> And when I'm asked that question, my mind goes back many years, decades ago, remembering what I did when I was a pup. We will see that I've uh, got uh, Kiowa and I got uh, Comanche influence. Had a lot of that in my younger days. <laughs> what I'm about to tell you is the truth, and it's not embellished at all. <laughs> With that said, I'll give you a glimpse of, about me when I was a pup. I was rough and tough, and uh, I was born in the mysterious Wichita Mountains uh, at Mears just before breakfast. <laughs> I ate wild onions and sheep showers and prickly pears and acorns and cooked bobcats. Well, uh, um, when I was a lad, I would catch with my bare hands uh, wild cougars and uh, wolves and uh, goats. I learned to do this by accident. Once I was up on top of uh, Mount Scott, and I was climbing up on this rock, and I uh, Laid my gun down over here, and uh, as I was climbing up and got right up there at the top and fixing to get my gun, a cougar attacked me. And we tussled and we wrestled, and I finally got, accidentally got my fist in his mouth. And he started pulling back, then I knew I had him. He started pulling back with all fours. And I just reached in there and jerked his guts out, and that cougar never did bother me again. <laughs> Uh, once I had an encounter with uh, the panther, the great panther, the Wichita's. I could never bring that uh, panther down. He was about three feet tall at the shoulders. and Oh, we tussled and we wrestled around there. And, uh, but you know, after that time, I'd meet that old panther and he'd turn his head and just walk away. <laughs> well, I would uh, many a time at wrestled buffaloes. I'd cut their tails off and their ears off and uh, I'd make walking canes out of their tails and sell them and I'd give their ears to my blue tick hounds and let them chew them. <coughs> well, I dug gold with the old miner of the Wichita's and uh, you could see a yellow gold from our dig. While staying with the old miner uh, many, many nights we could hear that lonesome whipper will. And when the moon was high, we could hear the headless horseman ride down from Tarbone. Mm -hmm. The old uh, miner would put out his campfire and he blowed out his candle, hoping the headless horseman would mm -hmm. pass him by. Well, many times while passing through the <coughs> Mears Gap, I thought I was. Uh, so, where was I at now? Where was I at? Modern technology and that's something. Something about the cancer. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, well, I think I told you about the old miner. Well, but many times when I was passing through the Mears Gap, I, I fought with that headless horseman on many occasions. Well, I rode with uh, Chief Hunting Horse on many a scouting trip across the Great Prairies, and once while riding with Chief Hunting Horse, uh, two giant eagles swooped down on us there, and uh, we reached up and we grabbed onto their legs, and we was going to wrestle them to the ground and have them for supper, but instead they just took off with us and landed us up on top of Mount Sheridan <laughs> and set us down. <laughs> oh, that was the most exciting thing I had ever had in my life, and I'll never forget it. 
Well, uh, one time uh, I had many encampments with uh, Jimmy Quito on Medicine Creek. We danced with many spirits and uh, had many powwows with his clan, with his clan. Well, he, he had a big clan. Once he made me a bow and some arrows to shoot fish in the shallows and a medicine creek and uh, I killed buffalo and once we went on a buffalo hunt with him and we used bows and arrows and used all of arrows up and so we uh, just run them off a cliff and uh, we skinned them all and uh, made teepees with the hides and dried the meat and had many groceries for many moons after that. Was named, I, well, I was named after Jimmy Quito. <laughs> My folks thought a lot of him. Uh, that may be true. <laughs> uh, I, was, uh, I was on the last great cattle drive in Comanche County. An old rancher up on Gore Gap, he went off down to Mexico and he uh, brought in a whole train load of cattle. We worked two days there separating out in two, three different groups. We headed them north through the refuge and all the way to Mears and we turned them east and went to Gore Gap Road and took them on up to the ranch. That really happened. Well, uh, I, many things was happened to me, sister, I'll tell you. <laughs> I, uh, 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 one of the greatest experiences I had, though, was riding shotgun on the last stagecoach from San Antonio across the mighty Brazos and went by Spanish Fort, which was a rough place back then, across the Red River, uh, went on past Bad Medicine Bluff and come on into Fort Sill with the payroll. Uh, um, on, uh, while riding that, uh, that stagecoach, uh, we had run in with a lot of bandits. I remember one time we Ran in with old Jesse James, and we switched fire, and uh, he turned tail and ran like a sheep bank. And I was like, I thought he was a big man. <laughs> I was. Uh, uh, well, uh, make a long story short, I'll just tell you. I was. Uh, I rode with White Earp, some of the finest. I rode with some of the finest, and uh, Matt Dillon. And, Pat Garrett and Wild Bill Hickok. Well, I rode with some that wasn't so great. And that was Billy the Kid and uh, then rode with Sam Houston. Rode with Sam Houston up in the Cherokee Strip in, in the territory. Well, times have changed and my precious Sue, she looked into my face with my weathered face and droopy jaws and shaky hands. She tells me, Jimmy, you was rough and tough when you was a pup, but now you're as gentle as a lamb and you have a soft heart, and I love you for it. Now, isn't that a sweet thing to say? <laughs> uh, it sounds like I'm coming out of the treehouse. <laughs>